Today we'll be looking at the equality problem for context-free grammars. So we have here two grammars and we want to figure out whether or not they have the same language. So what we'll show is that this is undecidable and that's pretty easy to do. And we'll also show that it's co-recognizable. This co means that its complement is recognizable. And what these both imply because we've shown that a language is decidable if and only if it is recognizable and its complement is recognizable. This implies that EQCFG is not recognizable. Because if it were, uh, we'll show that its complement is recognizable too. That would imply that it's decidable, but we'll show that it's not decidable. So how do you show that this is undecidable? Well, we showed that the universality problem for CFGs is undecidable too. So let's try to decide that assuming a decider for uh, the equality problem. So let's suppose that E decides EQ, the equality problem. Then what we'll do is we'll be able to decide the the universality problem. So to decide the all problem, then what we'll have here is remember the all problem takes as input a single CFG, not two. So let's say we have G here. Oops, I meant that to be a W, where G is a CFG, just like always. And the first step that we'll do is we're going to make a new grammar that definitely has sigma star as its language. So uh, let uh, G, I'm going to call all, be a CFG with the language of this thing being sigma star. And what we'll do is we'll run that supposed decider E on the given grammar that we had g which is upstairs and g all which is the thing that we just made so note that since this is a supposed decider it will say whether or not these two have the uh, same language so g if it has sigma star as its language it the e decider will say yes and if it doesn't have sigma star this thing will say no and so therefore what we can do here, and I'll let, invite you to check the details, is that we'll just output the same answer. Okay. So uh, we know that the all problem is undecidable. So that would imply that the EQ problem is undecidable because if EQ was decidable, then this thing would be a decider for the all problem, but all is undecidable. So that's a quick proof that the, the EQ problem is undecidable. Let's prove that the complement is recognizable. So we are going to show here that EQ CFG complement is recognizable. Okay, so that means that so, so we have to be absolutely clear what this is. So the complement is, uh, we got to include all badly formed inputs first, because if it doesn't encode two CFGs, then it's in the complement. So all the strings X where X does not encode two CFGs, and then union that with uh, the pairs G1, oops, G2, where these two things are CFGs, but they don't have the same language. So this is just uh, something to keep in mind whenever you're talking about, let me make that not equal better. So whenever you're talking about the complement of a language that encodes things, you uh, got to include all the strings that don't in um, don't encode two CFGs or or don't encode the thing that you're interested in. So I claim that the first guy is decidable because the procedure of whether of checking whether the input actually encodes a CFG first is decidable and decidable languages are closed under complement. So we need to 
uh, we need to deal with this guy right here. So uh, this thing is decidable. So this thing better be recognizable. So I claim that this part right here is recognizable. In fact, if the first part was just recognizable, that would be enough too, but I claim it's decidable. But uh, we need to show that the second part is recognizable. And the way that we can figure this out is, if this pair G1, G2 really is in here, then we need to accept at some point. If, it's not in, if this pair is not in here, mainly that the languages are equal, it does not matter. So if they are different, if the two languages are different, then there must be one string somewhere where one of them accepts and the other one doesn't. That, that's just the nature of how it works. Because if you have two sets that are different, there must be something that is in one that is not in the other. That's the definition of sets not being the same. So the idea here is uh, run uh, ACFG, or the decider for it. I should actually write it that way run the decider for a cfg uh, on strings until disagreement happens okay we'll just keep going we'll uh, test more and more and more and more strings until eventually one one grammar says yes and the other one says no so what we're going to have here is uh, on input g1, g2. So here they really are CFGs. So g1, g2 are CFGs. And then what we're going to do here is uh, write out the strings in sigma star in some order. It does not matter what the order is. As long as I go over the strings in some order. And then what we're going to do is run the decider for ACFG on, let's call the strings uh, W right here. And we're going to run the decider for ACFG on G1 and W as well as G2 and W. So remember that the acceptance problem, the A sub whatever, takes the machine or grammar and then the input second. So we're gonna run the first grammar, uh, we're gonna check if the uh, first grammar can make that string and the second grammar can make that string. So here, if, they're, if the answers, I should say, are different, then accept and that's it so uh, we don't have to worry about whether the uh, answers are the same because if they're if the languages really are the same then we will run forever and that's totally okay because if the case of whether they're the same is not in this language right here and so therefore uh, this could run forever but that's okay as long as we halt on the two grammar pairs where there is a disagreement, where the languages are not the same, which we do here, that's good. Uh, and we have done that. And the there is a decider for the acceptance problem. So this step right here, this A step, only takes a finite amount of time. And, and therefore, we can claim that EQ sub CFG complement is recognizable. And we showed here that it was undecidable. So therefore, EQCFG is not recognizable. The complement is recognizable. The original language is not recognizable. So hopefully that was interesting. Leave your thoughts about these proofs down into the comments down below. As always, please like the video and subscribe to the channel. It really helps us out. There are many other links in the video description if you want to support the channel further. And as always, thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.